Hi everyone and welcome to Art of Cart. Back in the spring of 2012 was when I first began uploading videos to my channel. Want to learn how to draw a cartoon girl's head? Well stick around for Art a la carte. And recently I finished celebrating uploading my 1000th video. In fact this is my 1002 video. <laughs> Throughout those 1000 videos I have received quite a few comments and I really like to reply back and answer as many comments as I can. One of the questions I get asked a lot is advice or helps for people who are wanting to start creating their own art related videos. So this is going to be that video. I'm going to give you five different tips that of things that maybe I wish I would have known when I first started this channel. When I first started recording videos, it would have been so helpful to know these things. Back in 2012, there wasn't a lot of resources out there to help you know how to do the recording and lighting and voicing and all that stuff. Nowadays, there is a ton of information out there. In fact, today's sponsor is a place that I highly recommend that if you're wanting information about recording, filming, editing, voicing, art, all kinds of things, check out Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of videos that cover so many topics that you might find interesting. If you're thinking about getting into filming or editing or just how to get your art out there or improve your art. They have classes on so many different topics and their premium membership is going to give you access to all of their classes, not just one category. So you can choose to study up on watercolor, animation, filming, photography, cooking, writing, and their membership averages about $10 a month, which is pretty awesome for the quality videos that you're getting. I use my Skillshare membership all of the time. I love going on and just watching classes even if I'm not like actively pursuing that topic. Sometimes when I'm doing art or drawing it's just fun to have a class talking in the background. Learning it's an awesome thing. If you're interested in finding out more information about Skillshare check out the link in the description box below where you can get two months of Skillshare for free for the first 500 people. But now let's get on to the five tips that I have for you guys. Tip number one, some people think they have to be at a certain skill level before you can begin to share or create videos. I say as long as you're truly passionate about what you're creating, sharing your art journey I think is a wonderful and beautiful thing. Tip number two, the camera. If you're going to record a video, you're going to need something to record with. Now, I myself use a Sony Handycam. Um, it's an HD and it's getting a little on the old side. There are a lot newer high-tech cameras out there, but for me it works well. But when I was first starting my YouTube channel, this is not what I had. I had a really old, cheap camera. It's just whatever I had laying around. So. I suggest that that's where you start. Don't think you have to go out and buy the most expensive equipment when you're starting. Creating art videos and editing them is a lot of work and it might end up being something that you're not as excited about once you've done three or four or five of them. Nowadays, most of us have a smartphone of some sort and most smartphones have a pretty decent camera. In fact, I have a lot of YouTube channels that I watch that use their camera to film everything. Now, there's a couple tricks with this. I And I can tell you there's a, a good way and then there's a better way. Sometimes people will take and hold their camera with their non-dominant hand while they draw with their right hand. And yes, while that works, I often will tell you that your focus will switch to your art and your camera will then start to slowly go out of frame and then you're looking at your you know your knee or something instead of drawing. Instead I would suggest finding some way to prop your camera up either with something that you can like stick it on top of again it doesn't have to be something expensive or finding a cool tripod. There are a lot of little tripods that will fit the little phone cameras and you can get them relatively cheap. Before you start filming you also want to check your your field of vision view, view of the before you actually start filming and drawing you want to make sure that you are in focus and in frame that means that oh, things aren't blurry that you have the settings correct so that everything is as clear as possible if you watch some of my earlier videos you'll see that the quality is not great but in all honesty back then they really didn't have high quality high definition cameras out there back in those days so I'm left-handed. 
I tend to put my camera a little bit more to my right side and tilt it just a little bit so my hand isn't directly over top of what I am drawing. That way it gives people a little bit easier time seeing. If you go back to some of my older videos, you'll see what I lovingly refer to as knuckle drawing where all you see is my knuckle and you don't see any of the art. Tip number three is lighting. Again, going back to some of my earlier videos, you will notice the shadow. That's because my light source was directly overhead and it was really harsh and so it made a cast shadow of my hand onto my paper. The lighting that I use now is super duper high tech. Not really. It's a, a lamp that I got at Walmart for like 10 bucks. The biggest thing I can say is have the light directed on the opposite side of your hand. So if you see, if I put the, the light on my left side, it casts that shadow, and you can't see what I'm drawing. But if I move my light over so that it's directed from my right side, so if you're right-handed, you put it on your left side. Anyway, you'll see that the lighting pushes the shadow behind. You can also use diffuse lighting where you reflect the light off of something else. You can get specialized studio lighting as well that will light your work area without causing a shadow. But again, that's more expensive equipment. And until you're sure that creating art videos is something you really want to pursue, I would just go with what you got. Tip number four, audio and narration. The camera that I have actually has a fairly good microphone. So a lot of times I'll just use the microphone that's in my camera. But in the past, I've had cameras that had horrible microphones. So with that, I will get an external microphone to record with. And I've used a wide variety of expensive ones and cheap ones. Uh, the one I'm currently using and loving is my Yeti, and it, it was an investment, but a good one. Now, the second part of this tip is narration or talking in your videos. When I get nervous or excited about things, I tend to start talking really fast. I want to talk really fast. Sometimes I want to say, and then I don't talk to me and I can't stop my voice and that's what we're going one of the biggest comments that I receive in my older videos is that I go way too fast. I talk too fast, I explain things too fast, I draw too fast. So remember to breathe. It's all right. Talk slowly, talk clearly, enunciate your words can really help, especially if you're just beginning this. Building good narration habits early on will make it so much easier if you, that way you don't have to like break your old bad habits. <laughs> the last tip I have for you, tip number five, is thumbnails and titling. Knowing that your thumbnail or the preview that people are going to see of your video is kind of like it's the movie poster hanging in the theater coming soon. It makes people choose to click on your video. So if you have the option to create your own personal thumbnail, definitely utilize that. Make sure that it represents well what your video is talking about, but also is exciting and clickable. And again, that's something that I'm learning. Next to that is titling, giving your video an accurate description. While it's fun to use clickbait, the painting that almost killed me. While clickbait can help you get more views, you want to make sure that what you're talking about is actually what's in your video. Case in point, I oftentimes will see videos that are how to draw videos. And then when I watch them, while that person is drawing what they said they're going to draw, there's no how-to about it. It's just a speed draw. So if you're making a tutorial or how-to draw video, make sure that you tell people how to do that. <laughs> exciting thumbnail, exciting but accurate title. The more you practice at this, the better that you're going to get. You'll look back on your older videos and go, I hope no one ever watches them. And then they'll end up being like the best viewed videos on your channel. Reference photo horse, um, its forelock is really kind of um, short. So just bend. Why? But if you're looking for more specific helps on filming, editing, audio, all of that stuff, definitely check out Skillshare. Make sure to use that code so you can get your first two months for free. A big thanks for Skillshare for sponsoring this video and helping me to continue creating videos for you guys. If you're brand new to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos, like the completion of the picture I was doing in this video where I also talk about how I create line weight to my line art. Hmm. If you're interested in watching that video, you can click it right here to go check that out. Well, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. And as always, God bless you guys. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in another art video.
拜拜。